Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Craig and I'm a software developer in the UK and in this video we'll be looking in depth at the HTML video and iframe elements which give us two different ways in which we can go about including video on our web pages. The HTML video element is what we would use to include videos which we would have saved locally within a project's files and the iframe element allows us to embed another web page or even just part of another web page into our own web pages. Sites like YouTube give us a selection of options to use the iframe element to embed videos from YouTube into our own pages. So if you have a YouTube channel of your own or even if you just want to add a video into a project from YouTube then the the iframe element is how you would go about doing this. We're on all of the main social media platforms so if you'd like to connect with us on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook then the links are in the description below and if you like the content please remember to smash the like button and subscribe. The more engagement that the channel gets then the more YouTube will put it in front of other people who can make use of the content. Okay, so let's get started by first taking a look at how we go about including videos on our web pages that we have saved locally on our own machines, and then we'll move on to looking at the iframe element and how we would use that to include videos from external sources out on the web, like from well-known sites like Vimeo or YouTube, for example. Okay, so I have a folder here that contains a video file that is from an earlier upload to this channel called Emmet.mp4. And as I'm sure you can guess from the title, this was a video on Emmet, which is built into VS Code and it gives us a number of time saving shortcuts when it comes to writing code. So I want to add this to a web page from a local source and I can do this using the HTML video tag. Let's pop on over to MDN and they say that video embeds a media player which supports video playback into the document. When we're using the video tag like we saw with the IMG or image elements we include an SRC or source attribute within which we specify a path to the video that we want to display. So let's head to VS Code and try it out. I have the project folder open and this has a simple empty HTML file which I'm going to open. I'll create a boilerplate using the exclamation mark Emmet shortcut and I'll hit tab. I'll put the title as video and iframe. Then in the body I'm going to type video, hit tab and Emmet does the rest for us. It comes with the SRC attribute already and we'll add the path to the Emmet video in our project folder. So it's in this folder here called video, which is in the same project folder as the index.html file. So the path will be video forward slash emmet dot mp4. I have this open in the browser with the live server extension, which you can get from the extensions tab here and just search for live server. Then you just click to install when you found the extension that you're looking for. Once you have Live Server, any changes that you make to your project will be immediately updated in the browser without the need for you to manually refresh. So if we save what we've done so far, we see that the video displays without us needing to manually reload the changes in the browser. But we've got a couple of problems here. First, it's pretty large, so we might want to be able to control the size. And there's also no way for us to play the video. If we click on it, nothing happens. We're just getting this static frame of the video, which I think is actually the first frame. Well, we can use attributes to specify the video's width and height, and we can also use attributes to control whether we want it to also play and loop, and whether we want it to show video controls. So we'll start with the size, and we can use the width and height attributes, but to preserve the aspect ratio of the video, I'll just use width. We can do this as the height will automatically adjust to fit whichever width we use. We can use any sizing unit like pixels or percentages, but if we just use a numerical value without a unit specified, we will get pixels by default. So if I add width equals double quotes and inside there 500, that will give me a video with the width of 500 pixels. If I add the pixels unit to the end, you'll see that it is totally unchanged. Just like if I say 400 pixels and save, and then we'll take the pixels away and just say 400 without the unit, and it stays exactly the same size. We can also use percentages. So I can say width equals 50%, and then whatever the size of the viewport, 
the width of the video will always be 50% of it. So if we adjust the screen size, no matter how big or small we go, the video will always be 50% of the width. Of course, we would usually like to control all of the sizes with CSS, but for now, as we're working just with HTML, I'm just showing you that you can also do it using HTML attributes. So I'll change that width to 20% for now because I want to show you that the video element is an inline HTML element. So now I've added the width as 20%, I will copy and paste or duplicate this video three more times. And when I save, you see that each new video is sitting next to the previous one on the same line. And it is only taking up the space that it requires as opposed to block level elements that start on a new line and push content that follows to a line below. So in the middle of these videos, I'll add a paragraph element, which is a block level element with the text of block and we see this in action. If I inspect the paragraph element, we see that it's taking up the full width of the page as opposed to the video elements which take up only the space that the content needs. So I'll delete everything other than the first video that we originally made and I'll put the width back at 50%. Next, we'll add the controls so that the video can actually play. So in the opening tag, I'll add an attribute keyword of controls. We don't need to add a value, just the controls keyword. And if we save, we see that we now have the ability to play our videos, as well as uh, do things like controlling the volume, going full screen, um, using this progress bar to jump to different parts of the video and so on. We can also make use of the keyboard as well, like the space bar will pause and play the video and the left and right arrows will jump forwards or backwards in 20 second increments. In addition to the controls attribute, we can also have a controls list attribute and this tells the browser specifically which controls to use or not to use on the video. For example, if we look at our current video on the page and click these three dots on the right hand side, we have the option to download the video. If we don't want users to download our content from our site, we could add to our video element controls list equals no download. And if we save, that option to download is now removed. If you go to any YouTube video and inspect, you'll see that they include this attribute on their videos. The other values we can add in addition to no download are no full screen and no remote playback, but we won't do those um, right now in this video. We can also have the video play automatically and we can also have it play continuously on a loop. We do these two things with autoplay, which means the video will automatically play when the page loads and then we use the keyword of loop to have the video play again when it reaches the end. We don't need to specify key value pairs for these, just the keywords. So in the opening tag, I will add autoplay and loop. And if I save that, we see that the first one of these kicks in straight away and the video is playing. If we skip ahead right to the end of the video now, we will see that when it reaches the end, it loops back to the start and begins playing again from the beginning. We might also want to add a thumbnail to our video so we solve the problem of just having the first frame of the video displaying when the page loads. Similar to what you would see on YouTube for example. Most videos on YouTube these days would have custom thumbnails now and we can do exactly the same on our own pages. So heading back to the MDN page for the video element, we can go down to attributes. We see controls and control list and if we go to the end of the attributes we see width source and just above this there's an attribute called poster which allows us to specify a path to an image which will be displayed instead of the first frame of the video. So inside this project I have an image folder that has an image file inside of it so in the opening video tag I will add poster and then the path of img forward slash and as soon as I type that VS Code gives me a list of the available files inside that folder. For the purposes of this video, that is just one file, and I will use the downward arrow to select that, hit enter, and now when we save, we see that thumbnail is in place over the video. 
Okay, so I think that pretty much covers the video element and we'll take a look next at including videos in our pages from sites like YouTube and Vimeo. If you have your own channel, you might be interested, for example, in posting videos from your channel to your own web page. YouTube and Vimeo make it really straightforward to do that. I have both websites open and I just have a couple of random videos about SpaceX open and I'm going to embed both of these into our web page. I'll start with YouTube and underneath any YouTube video we have this option to share. If I click on that and then select this option to embed, so that's share, then embed, and then we have this pop-up modal that gives us this bit of HTML code. So here we have an iframe element and heading back to MDN, we can see that it describes an iframe as a nested browsing context embedding another HTML page into the current one. So what this means is that we can render another web page or part of a web page inside of our own. So here we're loading YouTube inside our own page and YouTube sends us their site with everything hidden from display but the video that we want. So YouTube gives us a chunk of code that we can copy and this is accompanied by a series of options like showing the controls or maintaining user privacy so YouTube doesn't collect data on visitors that are playing your video. So I'll just check both of those options for the heck of it right now and if I click on the code itself it will highlight it and I can copy that in the bottom corner of the modal here or alternatively by right clicking or by using command or control and C. Now if we head back over to VS Code we can just pop this in and the video renders right there on our page when we save. You see that we have all of the familiar YouTube player controls that we're well used to which is pretty cool and we can change the values in the width and height if we need to as well so we can resize the video to meet our own needs. We can do exactly the same thing with Vimeo videos and we click this um, share button. Again, we can select a series of options like making the video responsive or fixed in size. And we can select a color scheme, so let's go for this red color. We can also add autoplay and loop options among other things. So once we're happy, we can grab that code, head back to VS Code and paste it in. And once we've done that, we hit save and there's our video from Vimeo. So I think that's a good place to stop and that covers how we include videos on our web pages. We've looked at how we can do this in two different ways. First, we use the HTML video element and associated attributes to include a video from a local source on our web page. Next, we looked at the iframe element, which allows us to embed another HTML page into the current one. In our case, we embedded a YouTube and a Vimeo video and looked at how we can use different options to amend how the video displays on our web page. So thanks for watching. I really do appreciate your time. If you like the content on the channel, then remember to like and subscribe and check in with us on social media. We're on all of the main platforms and the links to everything is below in the description. Other than that, I'll see you in the comments section below and in the next video. So thanks for watching. Take care, guys.